Hi, I'm Ethan. Hi, I'm Jackie. And we are Plan Well to Live Well. And today's conversation is all things real estate. Just last week, I had to close on a deal with a first time home buyer, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a tenant. Oh, wow. And the idea was that uh, he would buy this property, and if he didn't buy this property in two years, the landlord would have the right to just sell it on the open market to whoever wanted it. Uh, and one of the benefits of this deal that he made with him as a first time home buyer was that they had agreed on a purchase price two years ago. Okay. And interesting enough, they agreed on a purchase price of $350,000. Mm -hmm. But two years later, as you can see what happened to the market, That's right. uh, the property was worth $385,000. Mm -hmm. uh, but he couldn't sell it to him for three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. He had to sell it to him for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that's a kind of a lease purchase agreement that the and that's actually a creative way for some uh, tenants to to kind of lock in their future home mm -hmm. if they love uh, where they're living as tenants. As a first-time home buyer, you know he had some some benefits and some challenges. And I know you know you were. Uh, you know, working through that program with your family members or, you know, with, I think even for yourself, right? Yep. Seven years ago, I purchased a home. I qualified for first time home buyers and um, PMI because it's an FHA loan. So now that I'm seven years into my loan, I don't have to pay PMI insurance anymore. Okay. Because I've paid enough into it or I've qualified now. What does FHA actually do for first time home buyers? It, I qualified for a, a lower interest rate. I qualified for a lower down payment. And, you know, the how, start, how low was that down payment? My, it was 3%. Wow. So it made that much easier for me from a purchasing standpoint to come in at 3%. In some instances, it could be up to 5%, but I qualified for 3 So I did the minimum there. And then I was able to save some of my monies on the back end for the reserve because I needed to uh, upgrade and buy a refrigerator. This particular property did not come with a refrigerator. So I had to purchase that and a few other washing machine and dryer. Plumbing. Was plumbing. So it allowed I me that. that. Yeah, I had some plumbing issues. So it allowed me that little bit of a cushion to keep in the reserves. As a first time home buyer, today they're being squeezed out a little bit out of the market because the rates are so high and the property values are so high, but but still the FHA program, what it does for people is uh, it allows them to put less money down mm -hmm. and possibly a slightly lower interest rate. But the less money down is the big thing. Yes. That's the big thing. So like if you know you're looking at a $300,000 house, which is the average median price around here, mm -hmm. you know, to avoid PMI, you need to put down 20%. That's right. That's sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars and then instead you only have to put down three percent which is only nine thousand dollars so that's a you know that's a pretty big sixty thousand or nine thousand dollars but in return you have to pay this pmi you're supposed to avoid paying pmi you have to put down sixty thousand dollars that's what we said that's uh, and when you ask the bank or fha to say approve or ensure uh, the additional fifty one thousand uh, dollars that fifty one thousand dollars or that you know um seventeen percent is high risk and the lenders uh, force you into what's called private mortgage insurance which really only protects the lender that private mortgage insurance doesn't protect you in any way that protects the lender in the event that you don't pay your mortgage. So you buy the extra private mortgage insurance and how it's calculated, usually the, the lender uses anywhere, again, I don't have the exact answers for that, but anywhere between 0.5% and 1.5% of your loan value mm -hmm. is how they calculate your PMI insurance and then they break it up into a monthly payment. In my instance, because I've been the homeowner at my current residence for seven years now, um, I really didn't have to essentially do anything. The, um, I paid my mortgage on time. And because I'm over five years into my loan, um, I received notification from the mortgage company that I've met the requirement of my PMI insurance. So I no longer have to pay that. So my monthly mortgage payment was reduced by like 50 bucks a month. Some lenders, uh, they would automatically do an automated appraisal and simultaneously, if your mortgage balance 
falls, you've been there seven years. Yes, sir. You've paid down your mortgage balance, and they did an automated appraisal. And it's possible that FHA Mm -hmm. does an automated appraisal or requires the lender to do an automated appraisal so that they can remove the PMI insurance. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure if private lenders do that. Uh, but it's possible in Jackie's example that the lender or slash FHA did an automated appraisal. Mm-hmm. Simultaneously, she paid down her balance, and it, it appears that she has more than 20% equity. But another strategy is instead of borrowing the whole 97% from the bank in what we call first position loan, first mortgage, or 95%, mm-hmm. some people could borrow it as what's called 80-20 or 80% from the first lender, and then 20% from the second lender, or 80% from the first lender, Mm -hmm. 10% from the second lender, and no two loans are more than 80%. And so you can avoid PMI insurance that way because you kind of pick up a second mortgage instead. So you have to kind of weigh out, is the MI insurance more, or is the second mortgage more? And a lot of people, again, when they talk to their loan officers and mortgage brokers and stuff like that, is that, the lender says, well, if you borrow less than 80%, we'll give you a certain interest rate. If you borrow more than 80%, we'll give you a certain interest rate. Mm-hmm. So sometimes doing two loans simultaneously, mm-hmm. because you borrow 80% from one bank, could be at a much lower rate, uh-huh. avoiding PMI, and then you borrow the second mortgage from another bank, or maybe even the same bank, just a second mortgage, at a higher rate, but still have no PMI. And then when you average out the lower first rate mortgage because you borrowed less than 80%, the second mortgage, and no PMI, you might find out that it's better to do a first and a second than to just do a first at 95 or 97% because the rates are higher and the PMI, okay? So that's a big, uh, you know, some strategies when you're dealing with that. And FHA, really, any U.S. citizen will qualify for FHA loan if you meet certain requirements. And then we also have the VA, yes. uh, uh, Veterans Affairs. They also help, but the VA is not for everybody. It's for veterans, active duty, and their family. Now, there's a big, there's a slight difference between FHA and the VA of with when it comes to the down payment. So FHA <laughs> offers people low down payment, like you said, three to 5%. The VA in some cases could offer no money down, wow. but you still have that MI, you still have that PMI insurance. So I kind of want to talk a little bit people about interest rates and okay. wow, mm-hmm. what has happened to the interest rates, right? It's, it's significant, it's shot through the roof. In the 70s, interest rates were about, you know, seven and a half percent. Again, we'll put up a chart and with a source, and you folks will be able to see that. Uh, and then in the 80s, whew, interest rates shut up. They were around 17%. Mm-hmm. And then in the 90s, rates were about 10%. And then in the year 2000, rates were about 7.5%. And then in the year 2020, rates were 2.5%. And now in 2023, just three years later, Currently, the 30-year mortgage is around 6.8%. Just in my community alone, where I live in Philadelphia, the leap in my equity in my home, uh, to me, is like, wow. I, I would I would not leave at this moment because I know for dollar for where dollar. Where would you go? Where would I buy? Yeah, exactly. Where would I go dollar for dollar to buy the same where I would potentially move to? Because it wouldn't be the same, nor would the interest rate. Um, to your point earlier, I locked in at a lower interest rate, which was kind of high at the time, which was 3.5%. I have neighbors that have moved in from New York State. Yeah, well, we remind, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia is a fraction of the cost, cost of New York. So my neighbors are from New York, and I have neighbors from New Jersey. So it's just interesting. My community is changing. Uh, the, there's more rental properties. There's more uh, senior living. There's more commercial uh, walking distance. I, I'm seeing the shift in my community. With these interest rates being high and inventory being low, it's created a slow market yes. where it used to take, when interest rates were 2.5, it used to take a week or two to close. That's right. And there was like 20 offers in one day, right? And now it's taken a month and a half to two months to close, but the prices are either stable or slightly up. And that's because there's no inventory or there's no inventory of quality property. We do see this uh, trend 
in our space because we're dealing with estates and retirements and inheritance. We see this space called downsizing or or selling off uh, selling off real estate. Uh, Tell me what have you seen in you know in your daily in your daily work? I saw a client I hadn't seen her in three years. A lot has changed. She said, "Meet me at my new address." She's now living in this beautiful retirement community. It's like a campus, if you will, and it's just amazing to me. She sold her home. Her children are older, and she said, "I needed a smaller space." She's very active. She wanted community, but what was most important to her was the community part of it being active, and also since her income and needs have changed, this particular place that she moved into um, is based on 30% of her monthly income. Mm -hmm. So she was able to sell her home, put a little nest egg aside for herself, and based on her social security and pension, determines her monthly rent. They are very popular, Mm -hmm. and a lot of people do that. They downsize, they sell their houses, Mm -hmm. and then they put some money down and they go to these places. They're they're very popular. But a lot of people also do that for those reasons, but they also do it because they want a plan of action. What if I know that I can go from building A to building B to building C, and they offer me care management. We wanted to thank everybody for joining us today for our, our real estate segment. And as always, When you plan well, you live well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.